watching the Urban Debate and Fatal Souls. Good evening and thank you for joining us. We're talking about Aadhaar because in the Supreme Court today, the Attorney General representing the Government of India placed before the Supreme Court that the government will move the deadline of linking Aadhaar to about 140 different services to the 31st of March for those people who don't have Aadhaar cards or Aadhaar numbers just yet. This notification will be out tomorrow, which is what the Attorney General has promised the Supreme Court. So the deadline has moved for those people who don't have cards, but for everybody else it remains the 31st of December. This government also argued in front of the Supreme Court not to put a stay on any of the linking processes that are on right now, saying this is an important process that's been on for several years and it should be allowed to continue. The Supreme Court has now decided that it will begin hearing the all-important Aadhaar case by the constitutional bench next week. Why is it the government wants to continue this linking process while the Supreme Court has begun its hearing? What was the need to argue? Don't ask us to stop. Don't put a stay on this. That's the question we're asking this evening. Given all of the confusion and all of the questions people have with the Aadhaar database, with the security, why won't the government just put a pause button on it until after the Supreme Court has given us its decision? Joining me on the show, Hitesh Jain, spokesperson of the BJP, Sanjay Jha of the Congress. Deepak, Deepak Karanjikar is a member of... Uh, Atrika Kranti, Shailesh Gandhi is the former Central Information Commissioner, Ashwarya Bhatti, Advocate of the Supreme Court, Dr. Anupam Saraf, former CIO Pune City, and he also at this point has a case pending in the Supreme Court against Aadhaar. Hitesh Bhatti uh, is our cybersecurity expert. I welcome all of you to the show. Ashwarya Bhatti, I'm so glad to have you join us right now uh, because there was a, a, a soundbite of yours that A and I recorded in a previous Supreme Court hearing that for some reason went completely viral yesterday to a point where the UADI actually put out a press release about that soundbite, referring to you as a lady lawyer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Aishwarya Bhatti, would you want to reiterate the things you said in that soundbite? Because uh, you said so very passionately and you, you were completely right. Aishwarya. So, Faye, uh, I am appearing in the Aadhaar matter for one of the petitioners and we have challenged this scheme. I've been appearing from the beginning. Uh, this, but the sound, you know, the bite of ANI that went viral was actually not a recent bite. Uh, it was over a year old. Uh, it was, in fact, the day, the, the day of the bite was when the, when the three judges bench, uh, who was hearing the Aadhaar matter, had referred the issue to constitution bench, which ultimately led to the privacy judgment uh, of the nine uh, honorable judges of the constitution bench of Supreme Court, which we saw recently. So that was an old bite that I, I don't know for some reason went viral. I haven't seen the clarification, but whatever. I'm not just a lady lawyer. I'm a lawyer who's representing a petitioner in this case. Uh, and that order that I sp uh, is actually been modified by the constitution bench itself. Uh, the interim order was modified. The mentioning that happened today, uh, <coughs> the, the issues were raised, like you po rightly pointed out, that the government was okay to move the deadline to 31st March of 2018, since the matter was not coming up for hearing. Uh, and of course, the Supreme Court has uh, its roster full. Uh, because even after the privacy judgment, the validity of Aadhaar case and you know whether it falls short of uh, uh, fundamental rights, including privacy and other issues, has to be examined. Now, uh, that matter has not come up for hearing, so the government, uh, the, the Attorney General made a statement to the court that they will push the deadline to 31st March. But he made a, uh, it was a qualified statement in the sense that he said it will only be for people who do not have Aadhaar. Uh, Mr. Sham Devan, who is appearing also for one of, uh, one, of the, in the, one of the lead matters for the petitioner, he pointed out to the court that, uh, you know, a lot of people do have Aadhaar card, but they do not want to get their uh, uh, Aadhaar card linked to everything. So uh, even if I have an Aadhaar card, I don't want to get it linked to all my services. The government cannot force me to do that just because I have an Aadhaar card without hearing our application. So on that, uh, the Honorable Chief Justice uh, has agreed to have the matter listed. Uh, on the issue of this interim prayer, qua the petitioners or qua the Union of India, so as of now, uh, I think next week we should have a hearing before the constitution bench on this limited issue as to this, uh, you know, this uh, qualifying statement will apply to people having Aadhaar or not having Aadhaar. 
I want to I want to bring this uh, bring Hitesh Jain into this. Hitesh Jain, if the government is willing, uh, as as has been uh, produced before the Supreme Court, to move the deadline for those people who don't have Aadhaar, why can't we just move the deadline for everybody? First, we have to understand what is the reason behind linking Aadhaar to the PAN card or the government uh, subsidies and this thing. First, the objective is to ensure tax compliance. Second objective is to prevent leakage in government revenues. Third objective is to reach out to the targeted beneficiary. Now, it was, uh, I mean, we all know the famous statement of the former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi when he said, when the government wants to ensure that one rupee should go to the targeted beneficiary, he only, by the time the money reaches, it is 15 paisa and 85 paisa, 85 percent, uh, 85 paisa is lost in the system. Now, the government has considered all the factors very carefully and we have the data in the last two years that the money is reaching to the targeted beneficiary, the money is reaching to the bank uh, accounts directly and there has been no complaints of leakages. Now, when Aadhaar is serving such an important purpose, then I don't see, I mean like, you know, this whole argument is again misinformed why this thing. I think those who have Aadhaar numbers, I don't see any hesita any problem as to why they cannot link. As far as those who do not have, the government has considered their hardships and given them a three months grace period so that they can get their Aadhaar cards and then, then link it to the various uh, accounts. So, in, from that way, I think the, this is a very thought after uh, decision. Uh, the government has considered all the factors, hardships, and in the interest of citizens, the government have taken the decision. I just want to point out uh, from what you said, you said the first aim is for tax compliance, second aim is leakage in government revenue, third aim is uh, leakage in government beneficiary system. According to the Aadhaar Act, the only aim is to plug leakages in the government benefits system. Third is to reach system. out to the targeted Tax compliance and leakage in government revenue is not included in the Aadhaar Act anywhere as one of the benefits of this system of uh, of Aadhaar. That's not why Aadhaar was brought That's into right. uh, brought into play at all. Sanjay Jha will rebut. Sanjay Jha, go ahead. You know, Faye, I want to just make a very brief point. And first, I want to be very transparent here and tell you that I was watching your uh, previous program that you were doing before this Aadhaar program. And I'm, I'm glad, and I don't want to embarrass you, but I'm glad that you are at least discussing very pertinent issues when other mainstream media are not. And Aadhaar, I just want to make one short point. I think end of day, the reason why there is so much confusion Mr. out there Sanjay is because, yeah, the other I mean, the government media is media extending a deadline, etc. Oh, all, all right, all right, gentlemen, 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 I do I do not have the time to discuss other mainstream media. I only have the time to discuss Aadhaar. Can I? May I please bring you back on point? Channel are discussing the niche comment made by your leader. So please. Uh, first, Hitesh, 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 I don't have the time for this. I don't have the time for this. And don't be, don't make such kind of, don't try to act over smart by making such kind of comments. Right, I'm, I'm, no, but since Sanjay Jha said <laughs> that you are saying the other mainstream channels are discussing, so he should first apologize for such comment by his party leaders and rather uh, speak on the. Uh, I don't have the time for this. Anupam to Saraf, I'm going to, I'm going to, to go to uh, my like, non-political you know, guest right now. Anupam Saraf is a case pending before the Supreme Court. Anupam Saraf, would you respond to Hitesh Jain and his point about uh, if? If you have an Aadhaar card, you shouldn't have a problem. Sanjay I'll come back to you. If you have an Aadhaar card, you shouldn't have a problem so, in the I linkage, which is Hitesh. what Hitesh Jain said. Anupam Saraf, would you respond, please? Yeah, so Mr. Hitesh Jain should recognize that we have something called as NEFT, which the RBI has been uh, monitoring and running for more than a decade in the country. And the government of India and various state governments have been actually transferring benefits to citizens of India for more than a decade using NEFT. So there is no necessity and no role that Aadhaar has to play to transfer benefits directly to bank accounts. So therefore, I think it is a completely mistaken statement to say that you need Aadhaar in order to transfer benefits. Second is, I would like to point out that when he's saying that the purpose of Aadhaar is so many fold from taxes to giving subsidies to doing various things, he is actually creating what is called as a functional creep. You, because you can't justify and you can't identify what purpose it really serves, you want to link it to everything as if it were a magic wand. Aadhaar is just plainly a simple number which was allotted to data which was submitted by private parties. This data has not been audited, it has not been verified, 
It is not certified by anybody. It does not prove the identity, address, existence or resident status of anybody. To use it for governance is completely wrong because it who certifies it, Mr. You, you know, I think you need to explain who is it that actually says that I am responsible if this is certified wrongly as an identity. Well, who uh, is liable? In this entire exercise, UIDI is not liable for anything. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to bring in Shailesh Gandhi. Shailesh Gandhi is pro Aadhaar and he believes that we should all make that linkage. He doesn't see a problem. Shailesh Gandhi, you want to rebut what Anupam Saraf said? Uh, basically, Aadhaar is an identifier. We can look at laws and keep discussing and debating, but let's look at the conversation saying today we are at a situation hmm. where over 100 crore Aadhaar numbers have been given yes. and what purpose can it serve, whether yes. we like it or not. The point is, the concept is that there cannot be another person or you cannot create another identity which is a fake because there is a biometric identifier. Hmm. If this is true, and I, be, I have reason to believe it is true, then it can save taxes, it can get better revenue compliance as Hitesh says, it can ensure that duplicates cannot occur, it can ensure that duplicate names will not occur and a host of these things. This entire gamut of things would be available provided we have this Aadhaar. Without this, okay. we cannot do it. There is no other means by which you can do it. You issue ration cards, you issue all kinds of cards. And of course, I am also wondering why the government is not going to use Aadhaar for election cards. I, I see no reason mm -hmm. and therefore there is doubt to suspect that there is some vested interest in ensuring that duplicates and fakes are in the system. All right, I'm going to come back to that voter ID point, but I know that, um, you know, that Ritesh Bhatia, a cybersecurity expert, will have a rebut to what Shailesh Gandhi says. Ritesh Bhatia? No, not, not only towards Shailesh Gandhi, but overall, you know, when he's saying about uh, why we are not linking it to uh, the election data or anything, because they themselves know that the data which is already there in it is not the right data. We don't have the correct data. So, so even if you want to link it, link it to the right data, it's better to have no data than have a bad data. And this is what is really happening. As far as uh, uh, Mr. Hitesh Jain was saying that, you know, the, uh, the, benef the people are getting their benefic uh, beneficiaries and all that. What is really happening? Are they really getting it? No, because in so many cases, uh, uh, did you see UADI just recently gave a notice to one of the banks? Because what they did, they changed their banks also. Yes. Just three days back, it was there in the papers, they have issued a notice to that particular telecom provider because what he did is, instead of where it was regularly going, the beneficiaries were of LPG sus uh, subsidies was going to a particular account, instead of that, it started going to that particular we've account. Also so right. we've also received complaints, Ritesh. We've also received complaints of uh, you know some telephone companies opening up payment banking accounts without consent, without exactly. permission. This is what Making I, the link without consent and permission. Is that even possible or is it is it possible that people are possibly checking boxes without reading? Yeah, see, they, you know, uh, if you say, see their agreement and all, it's so uh, long and, you know, there are so many fine prints to it. They just sign on it and they say, okay, yeah, we are for it. And with that, what has happened is the particular telecom service provider started its own bank and by default now you become a party to that particular bank. You become a customer of that bank, which is uh, not really right. And even if you're doing that, who asked you to move my subsidy from my original bank to your bank? Shabhi I Shabhi. didn't give you that I, right. I, I'm sorry, I'm not able to see the linkage of this argument with Aadhaar. Okay. You are saying a telecom company does something wrong. Today, the fashionable thing to do is to say everything that goes wrong in India hmm. must be linked to Aadhaar. Okay. Because I don't see... Because it, everything is being linked to us. No, no, because, <laughs> yeah, because, because a telecom company opens a payment bank and does yes. things without your permission, mm -hmm. that is no... Even if Aadhaar wasn't there, it could happen. How, I mean, how, how, it could how, have how would it have happened? It wouldn't have happened. It, it, because the KYC, the, the, KYC it wouldn't necessary, have happened. the necessary KYC for opening the payments bank account and the telephone uh, connection have now been linked via Aadhaar, Mr. Gandhi which is how they have access to all of that information. Now, where are the rules of how this telephone company ought to be treating your data? Do you know that, uh, this is very interesting, someone just sent me an email of a matrimonial website that has Aadhaar linked profiles. Hmm. The number of people who are uh, in the private sector who are asking for your details, 
with no mandate at all from government, with no you know uh, framework of how that data should be treated, and absolutely no rules those, is very dangerous. Those then are problems that need to. I, I'm not. I'm only saying. So then that let's solve those problems first. As a yes. Let's fix up those no, no, issues. Here, here, here is something that I would like to point out. Uh, the story is very famous that when the first hand uh, <coughs> horse pull carriages were introduced in London, hmm. somebody made an analysis and said the shit on the horses will be such that the whole, all the London roads will go up by 10 feet. Hmm. This is, I think, what I call there is credit card theft, there is computerized thefts, there are hacking of accounts. For these reasons, we don't say all of this should not be on. I do not see any difference in the technology of Aadhaar hmm. with respect to all of these. Okay. And if fraud right. can occur, they can occur in we every have, system. We also have Mr. Deepak Karanjikar of uh, Arthur Kranti who joins us right now. Mr. Uh, and Arthur Kranti was the one that uh, gave the government the recommendation, if I'm not mistaken, for demonetization to begin with. Mr. Karanjikar, is there a larger plan for Aadhaar? Because there has been some talk about the fact that this is part of a much larger plan. Is there a suggestion or is there a larger plan? How do you see this? Where do you stand on this question? I, I think uh, Aadhaar is not a plan of Arthakranti, but hmm. what I can definitely, I will stand behind Aadhaar because of two reasons. There has to be a unique ID for every citizen of this 130 crore people country. It cannot go like what this country has suffered in last six decades is because of the cash economy. And now the digital economy or no less cash economy we are moving towards, then the unique identification becomes even more important. People always, I mean, there are a lot of speculative debate we can do and what if and all that we can talk. But what I basically, am, a basic thing what I am trying to differentiate is there is a difference between privacy and secrecy. By linking the other to bank, Gaur, I mean, you are just taking, a, putting money in the Indian economy and taking the out money out. Government is not going to ask you what you have done with that money. So there is a difference between privacy and secrecy. And Aadhaar will definitely underline that. So people, what they are saying that because of Aadhaar, you know, there is no privacy and all that. I don't think that's a, that's a right argument. I am definitely, Arthakranti believes that there has to be unique identification. And such a country where it, it runs on subsidies. It runs on government aids. The government machinery distributes so much money for the people's benefit. And if that is going unnoticed, as you are finding now, just by linking other, there are several fraud accounts, non-existent ghosts, people are getting uh, uh, surfaced. So in this country of such a huge people, such a huge subsidized process, financial processes, we need to have some definitely unique ID and that has to be linked. I, I do not think any government in the world can be any any... Ruthless government also cannot cross the border of pri privacy. Absolutely, I, I completely, I completely and agree with what Mr. Uh, with Mr. Yeah. Uh, with what Mr. Deepak is saying. But Aishwarya, I just want to come back to the difference between privacy and secrecy. We don't have a law right now that mandates that difference. So if we're going to say that Aadhaar will, of course, keep privacy and secrecy completely different, unless we have a law that says so, how are we going to do that, Aishwarya? What? Definitely, it is that there are no, no. See, Pay, it is not that? about privacy and secrecy. There are very, very serious issues. There are very, very serious issues that the petitioners have raised mm. in the challenge to uh, to the uh, to the uh, entire Aadhaar scheme. Let me remind you that uh, the you know when initially when the scheme was launched, it was not supported by any act. In fact, this is a scheme that was launched by the previous government and it was just on an executive direction that the scheme was launched and, uh, you know, yes. biometrics, uh, which are unique, biometrics mm. are unique to a to an individual. Uh, so biometrics, which are fingerprint scans and irises were, uh, were obtained with, with just uh, an executive fa fiat. And the contracts that were given and subsequently an act came, which was much later, but initially there was no act, it was just a governmental order. And the people who were given these contracts to actually collect biometrics, there was no semblance of any uh, uh, any governmental authority. You know, the, the issue is not really with the government. The issue is that the, the contractors who were taking it, these were, you know, uh, these were companies which were foreign companies. Some of these companies have uh, former CIA directors, etc., as, you know, as their heads, as yes. their directors. 
and uh, why just you know two countries in the world are doing it it's just pakistan and in india uk did an exercise like this they did collect biometrics they wanted to do that it was challenged in the court of law and after it was struck down by the court of law the the uk spent crores of uh, in fact millions of uh, pounds to uh, to destroy the data that they had collected so Absolutely. why should this entire exercise continue without uh, <coughs> a sanctity of court and you know without really scrutinizing the whole process also the manner in which enrollments have happened you know uh, the, the a lot of people who are non citizens of the country have gotten uh, um, aadhar uh, uh, cards and aadhar numbers this unique identity uh, um, identity was meant to be for people who uh, who are actually uh, you know uh, who have a genuine interest and who have a stake in the country citizens of the country and you will see initial orders of the supreme court they were very very categorical that please make sure that you know uh, you not uh, giving aadhar cards without ascertaining uh, that somebody is a citizen or an illegal migrant refugee not yes, here yes, by yes, proper yes. Uh, let me bring in sanjeev uh, ja on the points law. that aishwarya bhati just made sanjeev ja aadhar cards were given Yes, Sanjay Ji, Ashwarya Bharti made a very, very, very interesting point to the fact that this entire system like. was brought in by the previous government, the UPA government, and the deals that were signed at that time by the third-party handlers of the information, my, my humble, where they were told point. that they would have right and access to the data for seven years after that deal was signed, was also signed by the UPA government. Mm. Did we compromise ourselves by signing those deals, Sanjay Ji? Did the UPA government uh, start the entire problem? Definitely. No. No. no, no, no. What? what No, no, why, uh, Faye, I can't answer with ten people talking at the same Sanjay time. Ja, so, Sanjay, Sanjay, you know, I'll probably wait when. Go ahead. Yeah, Faye, uh, my um, the pertinent issue is very straightforward. I think Ashwar Ashwarya, as I think, put it very succinctly. The objective behind the Aadhaar was, uh, excuse me, sir. No, no, uh, the go ahead. Sanjay, 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 and to make that process more transparent i think the point that ashwarya has raised is very valid and i'll tell you what we should be discussing uh, fay now what is happening today is that the supreme court is yet to pass a verdict on aadhar all of us know it now the worry that everyone should have and this is the question we need to ask of the government is for the data that they are already collected by making it mandatory that by x date by january by december by march 31st even those who don't have aadhar have to link it to the bank account let me tell you that already 90 to 92% of indians have an aadhar card right so now the issue is that supposing the supreme court verdict goes against what the government is doing to all of us you think the government of india is willing to guarantee that your data given to a mutual fund company or to an insurance company my data given to my tele telecom company or to a bank account will ever be returned safely back to me hmm. is there any guarantee that the private players will not sell their data to various other people who are going to make a commercial exploitation of that and we already know as somebody rightly pointed out aadhar is already being hacked aadhar is already got a, a, a very debatable security standard so you are talking about a system that is so susceptible and a government that seems to be in a desperate hurry to implement it without a supreme court verdict and end of day if the verdict goes against them firstly i would like the bjp spokesperson to answer what is the supposition where is the government's confidence in the belief that the supreme court will approve it and if that confidence isn't there how will the government will mr narendra modi's government give an undertaking to the supreme court that your data will be returned back to you and the people who are going to get it will not have But any I, I don't think you can I actually and it's the right data sanjay chat left to be right. destroyed and by the way for the record i am not giving my data to any bank account or a telecom company all right so no, hitesh and fair question obviously you can't return data you will have to destroy data but is there a commitment that if the supreme court actually you know decides against this compulsory mandatory linking that the data will be destroyed I am glad Sanjay Jha raised this point. When Supreme Court was deciding the constitutional issue on the right to privacy, Justice Chandrachud has specifically dealt with the linkage of target beneficiary scheme and using of Aadhaar and all, and where they say it is very important that ski Aadhaar can be used. to ensure that the government can reach out to the targeted beneficiary and whole paragraph in the majority judgment has been given yes. how aadhar is going to be important from the uh, purposes of the objective no, of the government to target Nitesh. beneficiary so if Please i look at that question. judgment Don't i, I clearly i clearly hope i have clearly i have hope 
and mm -hmm. confidence that the Supreme Court will definitely, uh, there is some uh, hint that has been given by the majority judgment as to where they, uh, how they look at Aadhaar. No, no, but in, I don't think that you can't assume the Supreme Court, court will rule in your favor. What will you do if the Supreme Court no, doesn't rule in, the, in favor of Aadhaar? So, What's the he question? is not answering the question. No, no, one second, Sanjeev I'll ask well, the question. Well, what will you do if it doesn't rule in favor of Aadhaar? The comes from the language of the majority judgment. But let me also let me let me also make the point. I am very confident. I, I I mean there is no uh, this thing. The the language of the majority judgment and particularly when they dealt with the Aadhaar aspect is concerned, there is a paragraph devoted and each one of you and particularly you said that, yes. should read the concluding paragraph of the judgment of Justice Chandra Chod. Now you have to also understand as far as Aadhaar is concerned, you know there are a lot of anomalies and everything done. Now, as far as Aadhaar, Aray, Sitesh, you're not answering concerned. my question, which is, what will you do if the judgment doesn't go in your it favor? Not, will you destroy the data? Will you give it aside. back? What no, will you okay, do? You have to. No, let me. Let me answer. Okay. Let me answer. No, no, now, as far as Aadhaar is concerned, answered, what is there? Comes, I mean, the comes. numbers are not secretive. What is sensitive is the biometric information. Similarly, when you look at the e email ID and password. Email ID is a per se an Im information have. that is available. What is secretive is the passport. So all this Sanjay Jha, see Sanjay Jha has a classic habit of deflecting. I don't wish to answer such ill-informed question. As far as we are concerned, we are very confident. You we have, no uh, answer, we have looked friend. at the, the government has looked at the legal You are bluffing the viewers the of Mirror now. Very confident. You are that the not, legal okay, hang on, hang on. Gentlemen, don't squabble. The the let me, let me bring in Anupam Saraf. Anupam no, Saraf is, uh, was no, no, IT no, no, advisor to, to the state of Goa. Anupam Saraf, can the data be returned? And my my concern is also, my concern is, Private private companies that are now asking for other details with zero mandate, matrimonial, schools, colleges, uh, car you know, rentals. It, sorry, car rentals. Car rentals are asking for other details. E-commerce websites are asking for other details. If you want to return something that you have bought, it's ridiculous. Who mandated these people to use the <laughs> use Aadhaar? And how do we know when they're not forming a separate database on their own? So, Arubam Saraf, hey, can you answer my question? Which is if what? People are hacking the bank account. Do we stop having the so, bank account? I would really like to stop having, having the bank account. So, bank account. So, I, would, I, I would like to, I I would like to stop, so really. So, let's stop using the computers. There are internet they companies, can be hacked. the way the marketing is going You know, I, I don't, I don't believe, I see now. that Mr. there is a very, very big Mr. difference Jen, between you, these Jen. One second, one second. Okay, you're all talking at the same time. Everybody, everybody. You have had your turn. One second, one second. you have had your turn. One second. Okay, so to I answer your question, one second, since since, it is, since you. your question was to me, if my bank account is hacked, I make it a point to leave very little money in my bank account because I'm actually a poorly paid journalist and the hacker will not walk away with a lot. But that bank account will not give him access to my insurance policy and my mutual fund that policy and my it PF and any other type of account. savings that I answer may is have. It is only is one bank account. account. Fred, this is a, we are not talking about your bank account. We are you you did bring it up. The, we are Correct. talking about the bank account of any citizen. No, no, but the bank account of any citizen doesn't, doesn't give crime. access you then. And, uh, Ritesh, you want, you want to answer this no, as our cyber security expert? Why don't we just Mr. stop <laughs> using computers and bank accounts? No, no, Mr. Hitesh, you know, I understand what uh, your question is. But the thing is, when a bank account is hacked, it's only just the bank account that's hacked. When my credit card is hacked, it's only just a credit card thing that's hacked. Now, when my Aadhaar thing is hacked, it's my biometrics and that is like, you know, my password, I can at least reset it. What do I do about my uh, biometrics that that's gone? There is not a single reset your example eyes. of biometric getting misused or hacked. There is Why not can't a it be single misused, example sir? of biometric getting can you misused give him an example? or hacked. Uh, biometrics numbers can be misused, but not the biometric. Why can't the biometrics be uh, misused? There is no so here, uh, 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 a chemical misused. engineering uh, institute has demonstrated. You're a, I think you're no, no, let him answer. Hitesh Jain, it's unfair. It's unfair. You, it's unfair. Hitesh, Hitesh, Hitesh Jain, if you were to ask sir, questions, it's unfair not to listen to the answers. You have to listen to the no, answers. You're saying if you can demonstrate, definitely it can be demonstrated. And it has already been demonstrated no, several times. It's a counterpoint. I believe this is a debate where we are making counterpoint. Now, now just because you don't want to listen Isn't to the facts, so you find it to be about? a counterpoint, that's not fair, Mr. Jain. All right, I, okay, I want to bring in Anupam Saraf. Uh, uh, Anupam Saraf, forgive me, I interrupted you while you were speaking. Please go ahead. Yeah, so Mr. Jain, I think you need to recognize that firstly, all this use of Aadhaar which is happening is a contempt of the Supreme Court. All the orders of the Supreme Court are still in force. The UIDI should not have been allowing anybody to access the Aadhaar data 
beyond the five schemes that were permitted by the Supreme Court. So therefore, the there very fact no that the, the Supreme Court, you are free to bring the pro there is a proceedings. Please hear me out, Mr. Jain. Please hear me out. We have heard you out. See what the Mr. Jain, so please hear me out let first. Let him finish. Let him finish. Mr. Jain, please. It's my turn now. But don't make Mr. Jain. You need to listen to others. Don't mislead please the viewers go, by contempt. Please go and you are read the orders of the Supreme Court. If you feel there is a contempt, why have you not filed the contempt proceedings? Why have you not filed the contempt proceedings? Why have you not taken out the proceedings? Sorry, Hitesh Jain, Hitesh Jain, let him finish speaking, please. Mr. Jain, hear me out. Let him finish speaking, please. Mr. Jain, hear me out. Are there any interim orders passed in the contempt cases? Mr. Jain, hear me out. Are there any interim orders passed in the contempt cases? Mr. Jain, if you feel there is this order now. Okay, gentlemen, one at a time, please, one at a time. I can't understand either of you. Anupam Saraf, there is no, the Supreme Court has not put a stay on any of the linking processes. So where is the question of contempt? The Supreme Court order of August 11, 2015 and October 15, 2015 still stand. These orders have not been vacated. Therefore, if after passing the Aadhaar Act, they had to be vacated, they had to go back to the court and say that these orders need to be vacated, because the circumstances have changed. The government has not gone to the Supreme Court to ask for vacation of these orders. These orders still stand. It is wrong to say that these orders do not hold. Okay. It's a contempt of the court to issue a notification. I, Ashwarya Bhatti, uh, as an advocate of the Supreme Court, do you agree with that submission? Do you agree the that... that... Do hold. You know, Ashwarya? you are trying to speak something randomly. No. Did you hear me saying that these orders do not stand? Nobody says. Yes. Do you agree with what Anupam Saraf just said, Ashwarya? In your legal opinion? Yes, Faye, Anupam, Anupam is absolutely right. There were two orders that were passed. First was an order by uh, a bench of three honorable judges who had referred the matter to the constitution bench. There they had uh, prohibited the use of Aadhaar for anything. In fact, the order that no citizens should, should be denied of any benefit for not having Aadhaar was passed on the very, very initial dates four, five years back. And even the, uh, the 2015 orders that uh, Anupam ji is talking about, the first order was that it cannot be used for anything else apart from PDF. Uh, P uh, and thereafter, uh, the government had filed an application seeking modification of that order. And on the government applica government's application, the order was modified to, in to allow them to use it for four or five more schemes. And there has, uh, those orders have not been modified. In fact, contempt petitions have been filed. They will come up for hearing. See, the whole problem is that this matter has been referred to constitution benches, a bench. And constitution bench, uh, earlier it was held up nine judges for, uh, for, for nine judges to sit together. It, it took a lot of time. And even now, constitution benches do, are not available all the time. We have a uh, dearth of judges. So that is why the matter has not come up for hearing. You know, one more thing I want to highlight, Faye. Our protections, our fundamental rights are for citizens. They are not important, at, you know, they are important and more so important at times when there are struggles, at times where, where they are, you know, the democracy is at lower ebbs. And you can't allow for a scheme like this to, you know, continue. The, the examples that are being given that to, to ensure that the welfare schemes go to all and there is plugage of all the leakage that is happening, that could have been done very well without uh, linking biometrics to that. The explanation that has been given and the next wars will not be fought in the conventional manner way. Mm. Information is all empowerment. And information will ensure, uh, it will dictate the wars that will be fought in the future. We have serious issues of national security. You know, it's not about Facebook or WhatsApp having my data. They don't have control over my fundamental rights. They don't have control over my, uh, uh, me as my state and, uh, you know, relationship of a state and citizen is absolutely different. So the state owning it and, you know, state having all power and all invasive and all pervasive control over, over the data of citizens in all times to come is a very, very dangerous preposition. We can't have that coming. The kind of times that we are living in, yeah. you know, everything that we subscribe to, every information, if we are not paying for that information, then we are, con we are not consumers. Then we are commodity we there. And there are serious, serious issues that, that have been raised and the determination has to come by the Supreme Court. Right. Uh, I don't want to bring in, uh, I, I know that Deepak Karanjikar had a, had a point to make. And Deepak, uh, I, I want to ask you this question, uh, taking off from what Aishwarya Bhatti has said. 
Now, it's not a question of whether or not you trust the government. It's a question of modifying the functions of society and modifying the functions of our rights, right? So, 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, there may be a government in power which has heinous intentions and then has data and the ability to use that data to have us arrested, to remove our rights, to walk into our houses, to look into our data. Shouldn't we be vigilant of the future when we make laws? It's not just about today. It's about the future, Deepak. No, ma'am, I, 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 I definitely to a certain extent agree to what you say, but I will make a point. Yes. There is a policy and there is a process. What we are talking on speculative terms is the, all the modalities of the processes. How the securities issue will surface unless there is a process, how we will come to know that this is a privacy and this is a secrecy border unless we implement some process. What I am trying to say, the unique ID has to be there in this country. This country cannot be a place like a marketplace where nobody knows nobody. That, that, cannot, not? Be, that cannot be a way of... The financial processes are always but different than cards. political opinions and uh, judiciary processes. No, but the we have pen cards, we have passports, we have no, ration no, cards, we have... So why can't this be faked? I don't understand. The pen yeah, cards, the ration know, cards, country, everything else was made by the government of India. Aadhaar is made by the government of India. What have we mastered that will tell us that this is completely devoid of any of the risks that all the previous systems had? Biometrics. Ritesh Bhatia just told us that biometrics all, all can those, be compromised. All, all those ideas I mean, you took ultimately, in, all laws can be broken. So then, what I are mean, we going to do? No, no, Keep coming up no, with no, new laws? On, on, on a relative scale, yeah, it is not I mean, very easy to this, duplicate This cannot biometrics. be an argument. I, I think that Ritesh will also agree. He, he, I mean, a very no, skilled no, no, man no, will do something. Uh, uh, but, you know, Deepak, uh, answering to your this thing that a unique identity is a must, I understand that. But what was the entire concept of this uh, unique identity? It was never meant for identification. It was for authenticity. Authentication. I am the Tej Bhatia. Who will identify Correct. me? It was not the Aadhaar card. Aadhaar essentially was never supposed to be a card. It was just a 12 digit number. Mm -hmm. And my biometrics, when authenticated, would say, Yes, you, you are, are now Ritesh Bhatia. So that is not being implemented. It's not that I'm against this 12 digit number. I'm against this. Yes, we need to have an identity. I understand that provided it takes care of our privacy concerns also. And you know, when we are talking about data protection laws and recently METI, that is the Ministry of In uh, Information Technology has just given us a 200 page draft regulation saying that there has to be a right to erasure, right to be forgotten. They have also mentioned one line that our uh, that Aadhaar database is also not 100% secure. Even they have mentioned, the current ministry has mentioned it. So why the staring hurry? Is there so, in the Supreme Court, the draft regulations are there, privacy law is not out. Then why are we experimenting it with 1 billion Ritesh, people? Ritesh, are we working on data protection laws? Are we working on privacy laws? Can we wait until these laws are brought in before we make anything mandatory? How, how do we of course, the we, we are working on the data protection law. The government is committed. A statement was made in the parliament. Of course, we are working. The data protection law is one of the serious issues that has been taken up by the government. So, I am glad this is the answer. The the uh, the answer to the various problems that has stated that uh, the uh, the panelists are talking is about the uh, data protection laws and the government is committed to bring a strong data protection law. In fact, that was the purport of the decision of the constitutional bench of the Supreme Court in the privacy case also. And the government has made a uh, categorical statement that they will uh, bring up adequate protections and safeguards under the data protection laws. So can we wait until these laws are ready before we make yeah, Aadhaar man uh, mandatory for everyone? Five, ten years. See, the timelines and the deadlines and that I am not talking about. What I am talking about, it will automatically surface what are the lacunas in the system unless we try to implement the system. We will not implement anything and then how can we catch the thing? I, I don't, I mean, this argument, because there will be an issue, you cannot implement something. That's a very different that argument. Issue, sir, so many people are, make, are, who are, who so are not but having but a problem But this is, like, this is like building a boat and putting your entire country in it and not checking that boat for holes. And once you put it out on sea, then it's impossible to fix that. Why can't we just make sure it's foolproof? No, but proof? see here, we are seeing the holes also. And okay. still we want to take it in the ocean. Okay. Sharish uh, Just two things. Yes. A, I am a little surprised at Sanjay Jha's objection to this. In the boat, how Sanjay, do you know okay. there is a Because okay. it was his government that brought this concept out hmm. and said we have a unique ID by which we can target 
people, etc. And now suddenly I find Mr. Sanjay Jha on the other side of the fence. I think there should be consistency. Sanjay Jha? Can I respond to that? <laughs> well, yeah, I think, Fe, Fe, I've uh, answered this Shailesh question Gandhi, a million times think... before. I'm only happy to answer. I mean, you know, let me... Let, let me answer you, Mr. Gandhi. Uh, the truth is, if you go back to what we were doing in the UPA days, we were never talking about making it mandatory, point number one. And it was not meant to go to anybody in the country other than those who were likely to be the beneficiaries of welfare subsidies, like a PDS, Manrega, Midday Meal Scheme, etc. The more pertinent point, Faye, I will tell you what the issue here is, that where at the end of the day we become vulnerable in this government, is that data is the new oil. Data is what is actually in today's world becoming the most tradable commodity. And the government of the day is taking a massive risk by putting all our information in a highly insecure cybersecurity network to private people. By the way, let me tell you, when governments have leaked this data like the Jharkhand government, no criminal action has been taken against anybody. So tomorrow, if your data and my data is all over with some big telecom companies or foreign banks, you and I have no legal recourse other than to fight ourselves. And for that, also, we need permission. I think this is an anti-citizen law at the moment. And the government's intent to try and superimpose it on all of us is purely anti-democratic. And I'll be blunt, is fascist. And it gives us worry because this is Mr. Modi's government argued in the Supreme Court that the right to privacy is not a fundamental right. Let's not forget that. But, the okay, government let's, lost. Let's also remember, Sanjay Jha, it was your government that signed a deal with third party, with third party vendors, right giving them rights and access to the data for seven years after that deal was signed. Sudesh is on the phone line from Mumbai. Sudesh, very quickly, go ahead. Good evening, ma'am. This is Sudesh D'Souza from Mumbai. Yes, Sudesh. I, in fact, uh, you know, I just uh, wanted to tell you about this biometrics. My my wife, uh, basically, is a tax pay, mm. and uh, she has a health problem. She got a stroke. So, her, uh, you know, and uh, these people told us that we have to do a biometrics once again. We called the person home. Biometrics was done at our residence, and after doing it, it, uh, you know, we get uh, information from, uh, you know, the concerned department saying that it is rejected due to technical reasons. Mm. And because of this reason, uh, you know, we see the tax pay, we can't file a tax return. Yes. She can't file a tax return, it is not going through, just because of this particular reason. Yes, so we've got several of those complaints. Asif yeah. on the phone line from Bangalore. Asif, go ahead. Uh, hi, Fai. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, firstly, you're doing an excellent job on TV. Secondly, uh, as they claim, this is a unique identification number. But uh, where I have a conflict of thought is, um, basically, my uh, servant, mm. he, has, he, uh, uh, he resides basically in Assam, but as of now, he's working in Bangalore. Yes, and yes. he has two Aadhaar cards. How does this work out? I mean, uh, biometrics is something, and how can you have, like, two other cards of different numbers when it's not been unique then and if you have two cards then how do you make it foolproof with like you know attaching it to the bank like uh, for for if i take myself as an example i have like you know a fake uh, other card or a secondary other card and let's say i'm evil and i want to do something with it can i yes. do Yes. What what can you what can you do? Uh, and I just I, you know I just I, I don't have too much time left. I'm going to go back to Aishwarya Bhatti. Aishwarya, what are your main concerns? Or in this case, the people you're representing, what are the main concerns with the Aadhaar system, with the fact that it is mandatory? Well, uh, the the whole manner in which which it has been collected, you know, there are no laws brought in to ensure that the data is safe. Uh, you know, the protection is safe. Uh, even the Aadhaar Act that has come in, it does not address the issues that have been raised by the petitioners. Uh, like I said, that data is going to be huge uh, in times to come. Uh, it is, uh, uh, Sanjay Jhaji rightly said that it's the new oil. And uh, wherever, uh, you know, this information gets, uh, is available to all. And the real issue really is with state having it. You know, it's not a question of, uh, uh, the, you know, the state exercising an all-pervasive, all-invasive control over citizens. It's not the good times that we need the, you know, the rights. The rights are required. 
privacy is required our fundamental rights are most required and most missed when there are trouble times you know god forbid if there was a, there's another emergency or you know on other issues like that how can the citizen uh, give uh, the, the sovereignty that the citizen has how can the state uh, enforce it on the citizen taking away everything and this endangers our very national security you know today our government has it what and the kind the manner in which our data is kept secure today tomorrow if other people have access to it our whole national security will be in danger the troops movement where the troops are stationed how they are moving where are the important oils electricity etc everything will get jeopardized it is it is just not worth the risk that we are taking without having a system which is robust to ensure security well uh, sharesh kanthi wants to know how is this linked to aadhar but ritesh bhatia if if i you know through my Two cell positions. phone you can check to aasan sorry Trim, uh, true Ritesh? positions linked yes, to Aadhaar? Yes, yes, yes. Tell us how. Yes, tell us how. Tell us how. I'm running out of time. No, 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 no. Uh, you, you see, you have a unique number. Okay. Earlier it was Faye D'Souza, and this was uh, uh, available in this silo. This passport was in this silo. Mutual fund was in this silo. Pan was in this silo. Now everything is in one silo. Your profession, your timings, your stay, your holidays. Everything is in one silo. So all I need to do is not type Faye D'Souza. I just have to type this unique number, and we come to know about it. And that's how we come to know everything about the troops, the electricity, and whatever uh, Ashwarya so is saying is absolutely you, so, correct. So, so anyone who accesses this data will be able to trace. Where completely, I am, what completely. I'm doing, what I spend Absolutely. my money on. Absolutely, you know, you you were going to cover a story on that Bangalore airport becoming completely uh, other way. Yes. What was the whole thing? You read about it, you'll be like scared. They will come to know every moment of yours. Okay, now we have crossed this line. Now you have crossed check-in. They'll come to know even that thing. Of course, that's good <laughs> for security point of view and many yes. other things. Yes. But there's another but, danger right, to it. All right. Also. So so we have to we have to wrap up this conversation because we've run out of time. But in conclusion. we're just going to put out this information which i believe all of our uh, all citizens need to know in supreme court today the lawyers or the ag representing the government of india has promised the supreme court that the deadline for those people who don't have aadhar cards right now to link it to anything else has been extended to march 31st next year this information will be put out in a notification tomorrow for everyone who does have an aadhar card that deadline has not been moved which means that you continue to have the deadline of the 31st of december but the good news here is that the supreme court has agreed to hear the case of aadhar starting next week with a constitutional bench of five judges this is a very very big deal it means that we will have our verdict or we will have the supreme court's verdict much earlier than uh, we thought we would and this is what everybody is waiting for right now the government of india is working on data protection laws and privacy laws that will mandate who can access this data and in what manner they can access this data and how to keep your privacy safe while you hand over all your data to various agencies and that's important because that's the framework within which this entire system will exist and will work we need to have the framework first before we start to use the system so some good news coming in there in the meantime we're just going to have to wait for the supreme court to give us our final verdict on whether or not it believes aadhar should be mandatory so if you're wondering what to do you can choose between making the link or waiting for the supreme court it is your individual choice as a citizen thanks for watching